Okay, to finish off the assembly of the train, we're going to bring on the rest of the parts and we're going to use some different mates. Um, but really, for this project, we're not using that many. Um, let's go ahead and do the cow catcher on the front next. So I'm going to bring that part in. I'm just going to left click in the graphic window, accept that. Okay, so this button is actually to use to create mate connectors, which I don't need to do. Um, it's after that that you start getting into the types of mates. So a fasten mate, and again, friendly reminder, you can you can hover and then read about these um, instead of, um, or you know, just to kind of learn more about them. So and and on shapes help stuff is great too. So you can always do some quick research. But the fasten mate is the one that's going to fully lock it down. It's with one connection. It is not going to be allowed to move at all. And so I'm going to go ahead and use um, this face in the center of that top hole. And then on the back of the cow catcher. Okay. Now that this is supposed to slide into the hole. And so coplanar to the front of the train is going to be this face, right? So I want to be the center of that cylinder at the base there, like that. I click that. I'm going to zoom so I can see it as a preview. And if I hit this little play button to kind of play what can move, nothing moves. Um, this, this is the animate the degrees of freedom, and there aren't any degrees of freedom. Now, it just so happens that it came in just like I wanted. Um, if I hit this reorientate a second axis, you can see I can spin it around. Um, and potentially, I could have used a revolute mate, in which case it would be connected, but it would actually spin. And then I'd have to come back and use a secondary mate in order to get it to stop spinning, like, say, making the underside of the train body and the maybe underside of the cow catcher be, be parallel planes. But on shape is really not... Um, at least their intent of design, the way the program works, my understanding is that they don't, it's trying to get you to avoid doing that, right? That you can get things exactly where they should be and move the way they should be with, with exactly one of these, okay? So um, there's that. Let's just kind of keep going through and popping them in. Um, I'll throw the smokestack on top next. All right, now if I wanted the smokestack to spin, I could use the Revolute Mate, um, but, you know, if we want it to, you know, like a toy, if that were to go in and be like a nice tight fit, um, like an interference fit where it kind of it's pressed in and it doesn't really turn, then I'd use the Fasten Mate so that it, it you know, appears stuck. Um, and I'll get the bottom there, and then it's not going to go deeper than that bottom edge. That's where it's going to make interference, so I'm going to click that. Um, and just accept it. So there you go. All right. Um, on the back, you've got the hitch magnet and then the hitch peg. Now, if this were something that's loose, sometimes you play with these trains and they're, you know, it is kind of loose and spin. So maybe I'll use the Revolute Mate instead of the Fasten Mate. The Fasten Mate would lock it down and it wouldn't be able to spin. The Revolute Mate would allow it to spin. Now, this feature is, I'm not even going to be able to tell that it's spinning because there's really not like an identifying thing that's going to allow me to, in the graphic, it's going to see it. Well, I'll just grab this side, it'll flip around, no big deal. Okay, I'm going to flip the primary axis so it comes out. Okay, see, it technically can spin, but there's no features that are going to help me see that. All right, let's insert the, it's going to be the hitch peg. Okay, right there. And um, let's see. I don't necessarily want the peg to have to spin with this, so I'll use the Revolute Mate um, between just the magnet here and this. If I can get that surface, there we go. Okay, that way if this is spinning, that doesn't have to spin. Um, what else we got? So we need to add the linkage arms. Just drop both of them in. And we're going to need linkage pegs as well. So let me go ahead and drop those in.
Okay. So first the linkage arm. Now the the when the wheel moves, the linkage arm has to be able to spin in there. So I have to use the revolute mate again. Um, and that linkage arm is going to slide. I believe it is flush to the outside here, but it kind of slides on and interferes or you know makes contact with that face. So I'm going to use that circle. You know, just in case, say like the distance of that tab was not exactly the same as the thickness of this. Um, all right, so here's that. We will accept that. Nope, oh, nope, no, we're not going to accept it. Okay, so my mate feature is down here. I need to go to that last one. I'll double click on it and I need to flip the primary axis so that it's not interfering. Okay. Um, you can see that that moves around. Okay, it can pivot. The wheel can turn, and that pivots. Okay, so now we're going to connect the same way the linkage arm to the other tab. Again, revolute, and right there. I'm going to flip this around to get this side, and again, it kind of. It, it, it's okay. It moved the wheel to that instead of vice versa, but the relationship between the wheel and the body is still there. So once I accept this, it should snap back. Um, looks like everything is good. Let's try to test by, here, let me close that, by left clicking and kind of dragging a wheel and seeing if that works. Okay, that works. Now, we might have to come and create another relationship that would make this always stay horizontal because, you know, we don't want it to have it be in a way where one wheel can be going forwards and another wheel can be going backwards. Okay, um, here's a parallel mate right here. So let's just get the top of the linkage arm. And there's actually a little flat spot right here. I could also use the bottom of the train body. Okay, I'm gonna create that parallel constraint. Accept it, and now it should be that such that um, you can't get into a, a glitch with the CAD where one wheel is going forwards and one wheel is going backwards. Okay. All right. So that looks good. I'm going to repeat that on the other side. And I would add these. Um, oop, it's already in there. I don't want to hit insert, but um, I just want to revolute mate the linkage pegs into those holes. There you go. Took me a couple of clicks to get that to go. And that peg is what holds the linkage arm on. All right. And so that's it. So I think we've got pretty much all the parts at least once. Um, I'll go ahead and finish it off. But that will be the conclusion of actually assembling uh, the train. And then next time we will come back and look at how to do the exploded view. There you go. I think I got it done. I've got the cow catcher, right? Four wheels four axle pegs, four linkage pegs, two linkage arms, and a hitch magnet and hitch peg on the back. So there is your assembled toy train. If you have made it all the way to here, um, great job. If you have been using these tutorials, then great. I'm happy that it helps. I don't know if you guys are all going to be able to just jump in and kind of do it without my help. I made these just more of out of a, a need for somebody that needs the extra help and, and stuff, but... Uh, go ahead and like the video and kind of comment and say that helped me if it did.